Thank you so much for joining us today. I've got Steen and Larry with me. And today we're going to be talking about transformation in the world of shipping ports. But before I get into the questions that I've got for you, I'm going to come to you first, Larry. Can you do a quick introduction for everybody? And then we'll head over to you, Steen. Absolutely. And Emma, thank you very much for having me on. It's exciting, uh, exciting to be here. Um, my name is Larry Wilson. I've been at Splunk for just over six and a half years. I'm responsible for in our go-to-market organization of our ecosystems and partners. Um, I look at new markets and new innovation areas. So places where, where uh, new um, buyers and are figuring out what they can do with data and how they can digitally transform their operations to be more effective and more, um, more secure. Wonderful. Thank you. So then, Steen, I'm going to come to you for a quick introduction, and then we'll kind of run through a roundtable of my questions today. Yeah, absolutely, Emma. Well, you know, thanks for having me on again. It's an incredible opportunity, and I, I really love the amazing work you do with this this platform. And I'm I'm thrilled to be on today um, with Larry um, again. I'm I'm Steen Graham. I'm the co-founder of Scalers AI, and you know, at Scalers, we're all about helping industries transform with edge to cloud enterprise AI solutions. And I'm thrilled to talk about one of the biggest industries that's ripe for transformation today. So for those of you that haven't watched the first interview that I did with Dean, we'll be sure to include that either in like the entrail of YouTube or in the, the comments as well. But we talked about a lot of use cases for AI within the world as a, a positive spin to it, as opposed to some of the stuff that we hear about AI in, um, in media as a whole. And today we're going to be talking about how it can be used to solve problems more specifically within that, like I mentioned, that ports industry and looking at shipping and logistics across the world. So Larry, to get our conversation started, I want to talk about like, while we were prepping for this session, you kind of mentioned the idea of a perfect storm that's going on today. Can you kind of help set the context for people that maybe aren't as familiar with what's going on as to why transformation is so critical in this space? Yeah, absolutely. And, and unfortunately, it's not, you know, it's not a good, perfect storm, right? It's it's something that can be very, very, very detrimental. And I think we're all, even as consumers now, we're starting to feel the impacts of it. But you have so many things that are going, that are weighing on the the uh, ports and shipping and logistics industry right now, right? Coming out of coming out of COVID, which we hope we are, right? And we hope we don't come back into it. But when you you come out of that, right, you've had an increased emphasis on you know uh, on getting information and getting logistics and moving things i mean COVID has impacted the labor market um, for shippers um it's Im impacted you know the suppliers the the buyers everyone has been so totally impacted by this to the point where we as consumers know now to ask the question when can you deliver this right um, because oftentimes when you're looking to buy something or looking to bring them in even you you know they're telling you hey, we're having supply chain issues and we can't find those things. And we can't keep them on the shelves. So all of this is, is really driving this awareness and this understanding. Then you add in different types of things like, um, you know, so you, you have this going on on the supply chain and then you have regulatory environment that's coming and recognizing that ports are a mission critical area that have to be protected. And so you have a combination of physical security and cybersecurity that is new to this market, right? Um, people haven't thought about cybersecurity because they haven't been as digitized. But as you add digitization, as you add um, more sensors and that type of things, right? You expose that cybersecurity risk. So, so that's kind of the, the the second piece. And then the third piece, of course, is the economics, um, driven by a lot of geopolitical activity, where just the cost of transportation um, and moving things, the cost of fuel. Um, you know, making sure that you're, you know, taking a trip when you're making that trip that you're, that, you know, you're going to be full both ways to maximize that. So the, the financial economic impact is weighing very heavily on the shipping industry right now that really sits, um, as they try to kind of navigate this storm, but they're really sitting right now as kind of the, a, a major bottleneck, um, because of their lack visibility around the logistics and their inventory and supply chain um, and their labor costs and, and all the things that we mentioned. 
Great. That was like a perfect explanation of kind of where we're sitting. I think everybody's probably heard, just like you indicated that idea that like, oh, we're having issues or like, we can't tell you when that couch is going to arrive, but give us your money and hopefully it's here in six months. So I think we've all anecdotally experienced it. But for myself, before this conversation, I was out in Long Beach last year and it was the first thing that I looked up and was like, well, wait a second. Is there supposed to be that many out there <laughs> and seeing all the ships that were anchored and not you know being unloaded that was like my first moment of like oh I should probably start paying a little bit more attention to this and unpacking what's going on here so Steen rather than just talking about the challenges that are in place I want to come to you for the next question talking through some of the financial implications that are kind of rolling from what Larry just outlined for us and then also if you could share a little bit about what you have up your sleeve from a technology perspective of one solution for kind of what's happening in the world today. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Emma, when you're, you were out in Long Beach and you saw, you know, all those ships, um, today actually you won't see as many ships outside of Long Beach, not because the, the supply chain is dramatically improved, but actually they, they changed the requirement to avoid uh, pollution being close into Southern California. And so the ships are just waiting further away. Um, but the problem is still there. And the economic implications is, you know, normal in normal times, you may pay $1,500 to $2,000 to ship a container from China into the Port of Los Angeles or Long Beach. And now you're seeing 10x increase, $15,000, $20,000 just per container shipping costs. And whereas it takes a ship only about 15 days to make that transition, the throughput of that experience is actually um, more like 115 days right now, up from 70 um, days where it normalizes usually historically. So there's huge you know, financial implications um, in the price of goods. Uh, and the goods that actually can be shipped economically um, right now as a byproduct of the supply chain crisis that we see today. Now, you know, interesting, you talk a little bit about how, we, you know, how can we improve some of these challenges? And it's, it's notable that the U.S. doesn't have any of the top 50 uh, ports globally. And if you look at, you know, the port of Rotterdam, they've been automated for over 20 years and so, you know, there is the underlying technology to transform these ports and address some of these bottlenecks that are really driven by uh, peak container traffic um, that the pandemic drew that, you know, Larry alluded to. And so, um, you know, one of the ideas that, that we had around how we can take modern technology off the shelf technology that's, at, you know, at scale today and address one of the biggest bottlenecks is to look at the, the challenges facing the rubber tired gantry crane operators, which actually load and unload those trucks. And according to the California Maritime Association, it can take about 8,000 trucks to unload one ship. And while the front end of the port is automated, it's the, the union uh, crane operators that are actually unloading um, and loading up those trucks. And so that's one of the areas of bottlenecks. And one of the challenges they're seeing right now is about 50% of trucks are no-showing appointments. And there's a huge level of congestion. So making sure the truck is at the right place at the right time and getting the right container is incredibly important. Um, and Emma, if you if you throw up the, the dashboard, common off the shelf IP cameras and AI technology that's at scale today to detect a license plate, read the associate license plate, pull up the work order ID, pull up the crank container ID, essentially make sure that that truck's at the right place at the right time. Um, and simultaneously, one of the benefits um, you know, of AI is we can also do things like enhance port safety. As the ports become more congested, we have to solve the number one problem um, at ports or the number one priority at ports, which is making sure that all the workers are safe. And so in the other camera feed, you see us kind of running uh, a different model or doing modern AI tripwire detection to notify the crane operator when it's safe to proceed um, and make sure there's no safety issues um, in that highly congested port as well. But some of this modern technology now, we can instrument the physical world with AI, give the crane operator more insights, but equally important is being able to bring in the batch-based analytics that meet the regulatory requirements um, and the fossil fuel emissions 
um, requirements that of course we want to reduce over time. So if you if you throw up the the additional dashboard, we'll show you some some fantastic data in Splunk. And so we're actually pulling this data off that edge um, AI models that we're we're using these IP cameras to monitor the RTG crane efficiency, and then we're sending this up to the Splunk dashboard to measure the key operational technology metric or the turn time of those cranes, how fast and efficient they can operate. Should be noted that these cranes are, are fossil fuel burning machines, and so the efficiency of the machines leads to um, you know CO two emissions. And um, in many ports, they have a mix between hybrid and diesel. So in this dashboard, if you can really zoom in on it, you'll see that there's a uh, there's both diesel and hybrid cranes that we're showing and the ability to look at the inbound trucks and, and optimize routes into those diesel cranes um, or the hybrid cranes relative to diesel would be a great way to maintain um, emissions declines over time as well. But the Splunk analytics are, are pretty fantastic. You can double click really deep uh, from an operator perspective and look across terminal, across crane operators, across these metrics from operational technology to emissions to safety violations. And it's just a great way to add that physical world data real time and, and put the leadership team that operates these ports in the, in the ability to, to solve some of these problems in, in your real time as well. So what I want to do now that we've talked through kind of some of the, the physical aspects of how we're going to solve some of these challenges, I want to pull back from a little nugget, Larry, that you dropped in that first response where you talked about cybersecurity as being kind of a new and rising concern in this industry as well. And as we introduce more technology, there's risk that comes along with that. So I want to come to you first to just talk a little bit about that idea of cybersecurity. And then before we wrap up, Steen, I'm going to get your thoughts on it as well. No, I think obviously, you know, that's as, as different industries and we work with our customers all the time on, on digitally transforming their business, right? And that includes getting in more data and, and expanding their network. When you have the world of the internet, right? There's so many tentacles in so many places which which you can, um, you know, be um, attacked. And, and obviously ports are part of our core, core key part of our um, infrastructure, right? You can um, imagine the impact, right? If a port goes down, uh, we've, seen, we've seen that experience, um, you know, not from a cybersecurity perspective, but just from either, a, you know, a labor strike perspective or other things. I mean, this is a very significant impact on our economy, on, on reaching our, our um, you know, are, are people getting goods? Um, those are very significant things that happen when those go down. So, so obviously it becomes a, a larger threat um, as we start to digitize those pieces and, and having visibility into the, the, the cyber side of how that's working and, and being understanding um, the types of things that, that you're, able to, um, you're able to see with a lot of tools like Splunk, um, wherein, um, you know, um, third worlds or, you know, improper actors um, may find it an, an opportunity to try to impact uh, a region um, through those ports area. Um, you need to have the visibility. And so the government um, and the Ports Authority this last year actually has increased um, recommendations and regulations for um, cybersecurity to map to NIST um, standards that the government has put out for um, uh, infrastructure um, and, uh, you know, critical infrastructure um, security. Great. Steen, before we wrap up our time together, what are your thoughts on the idea of cybersecurity and what should we be thinking about when we transform this industry? Well, I think Larry did a great job of characterizing, you know, the challenge, which is if you connect the physical world uh, to the internet, this attack surface dramatically increases. And you know, our ports are some of the most trusted parts of, of the country's infrastructure. And, you know, given that we have such critical infrastructure and we're facing challenges today, if we modernize those ports um, with modern technologies, we have to ensure that that attack surface isn't, isn't leveraged, um, you know, to create downtime and, and worsen the crisis that we're seeing today. There's enough external factors in the world today that's driving this crisis to, you know, an even greater link. Um, so we actually have to, to implement that cybersecurity infrastructure. The great thing, though, is, is the technologies are in place to do just that. 
and so it's just a technology deployment uh, challenge um, today and and it's great to great to see the ports um, in the infrastructure association aligned with NIST standards as well. Well, thank you both for taking the time to chat with me about this. I'm sure there is lots more that we could talk about and hopefully there will be lots more that comes through in the comments. But thank you both for taking some time to chat. If you're not already everybody watching, please make your way over to Steen and Larry's profiles and make sure that you give them a follow on LinkedIn and as well, and as always, reach out to any of us if you've got any questions. But thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks for having us, Emma. Really thank appreciate you very it. Much, Emma. Thanks, Dean. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.